I could have your attention, please. We are going to get started. I'm sorry, we are a little late. We had a, this reception going on, and that's why we're just a few minutes late. But I'd like to welcome you all. And those of you who are not yet seated, if you would please come and take your places. My name is Orlean Curla, and I am the state president for Eagle Form of California. We're delighted to have you all here with us. We've already had a very full, rich day. Some of us were at the state capitol having a lobby day with an outstanding panel of speakers. And we'd like to acknowledge those people who were part of that panel. Uh, we have Heather Goss right over here. And Karen Klinger right over here. And uh, Rosa Corey, are you here? Great. And our other special guest was not able to stay, but they learned so much amazing information about redevelopment from this great panel. So we really appreciate them, appreciate all those who were there in the audience, and those who passed out the literature and did the lobbying. And we are now going to have a wonderful evening program for you. I have the great honor and privilege of introducing our MC, and this is Mark Williams. He is a wonderful, renowned radio host who uh, every now and then you hear his voice on radios across the nation. And he just served as our auctioneer for a, a live auction that was going on with this other reception. And he will be our MC for the evening. He's a, a, been a Tea Party leader and a very courageous activist speaking for truth on many, many causes. So we are very honored to have with us Mark Williams. Okay. Orlean was very politely telling you that I'm the reason we're late, as <laughs> I was the auctioneer. My name is Mark Williams. I'm a radio talk show host. Uh, I was here in Sacramento on the radio for many years. These days I work primarily in Dallas, Texas, and Kansas City, Missouri, from my own radio studio here in East Sacramento. I've been active for the last couple of years. I actually walked away from my career to travel the country with the Tea Party. And since then, I've spoken in nearly 200 cities as part of the Tea Party Express. I've lobbied. Uh, now I'm going back to the real world of actually working for a living, uh, as opposed to traveling the country, because it's, it's time for me to do that, part of my contribution. But along the way, and I'd just like to mention very briefly, over to my, uh, over to my left, uh, I wrote a book as a result of the trip called Taking Back America, One Tea Party at a Time. Uh, we have it available here for you, available for a $20 donation. There are also some other materials dealing with the Constitution that we'll be happy to, uh, to let you have as well. Uh, these, uh, the, the book and the materials basically lay out the case for America and what it is that caused American citizens to rise and rebel against overbearing, overtaxing, overly liberal, far too intrusive and nonsensical government that we see happening in this country today. And it points out the slippery slope. And the Eagle Forum and what you do, one of the antidotes, and this night is a celebration of that antidote. Very briefly, I grew up in Boston during the end, tail end of the Vietnam and civil rights era. When I was growing up, Forced desegregation came to Boston, and my city, my hometown, erupted in riots. People were throwing Molotov cocktails at school buses filled with black kids. I was one of those as a youngster standing in the streets between the people throwing the cocktails and the school buses. When we would go to organize our marches and our, our actions to protect those kids, we'd walk into these organizing offices next door in Cambridge, and I'd be greeted when I walked in by the North Vietnamese flag, pictures of Ho Chi Minh, the little red book of Mao. That's not why I was there. I was there because it was just plain wrong to throw Molotov cocktails and rocks at black kids who just wanted to go to school. It wasn't their fault some judge put them on a school bus to another neighborhood. The point of the story is that here we are in 2011. That was 1974. The people who hung those flags and handed out those materials to us youngsters stayed active. They kept recruiting us. They kept cultivating us. They cultivated an entire generation. 
They created two things, the culture of disinvolvement by convincing people that the process was evil and we shouldn't be involved in our own government except to vote. And they also brought us the culture of dependence on government. They brought us a culture that says America is evil, that there's something wrong with a nation founded on rights granted each human by its creator, by their creators. There's nothing wrong with that. There's everything right with that. That's what the Eagle Forum stands for. You'll find that and more in the books, and I'll be happy to autograph anything over there for you as well. This is also a celebration of America. An amazing turnaround has taken place in the last year. When I first hit the road a couple of years ago, we rolled into some cities and not a single person was there to greet us. St. Louis, Missouri, nobody. Gallup, New Mexico, nobody. My last national tour, I started out with Sarah Palin. We hit Searchlight, Nevada with our opening event. A town of 500 people. There were 35,000 in attendance. When I introduced Sarah Palin on Boston Common, at a very spot where I had stood in 1974 to denounce people throwing rocks and Molotov cocktails at school buses, there were 15,000 in Boston. In the absolute, in fact, on our way there, we had, a, we had a TV crew on the bus from Beijing. And they told us that in Beijing, there's a joke that there are two capitals of communism in the world, Beijing and Boston. And we had 15,000 people. America's awake, and you and the Eagle Forum are part of it. Phyllis Shafley, you've done a marvelous, marvelous job. And appropriately enough, we are going to open with a prayer. And with our opening prayer, I'd like to introduce a man I've had the pleasure of, oh gosh, when did I first meet Craig? Probably about a dozen years ago when he was working a sidewalk running for city council. Today he's a trustee of the Robles School District. He is a conservative politician. He's a conservative speaker. He's a, he's a religious man. He's a family man. I'm proud to call him a friend. Ladies and gentlemen, Craig Deleuze. Thank you, hearts and minds on the Lord. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this day which you have made. Father, we thank you, Father, for waking us up this morning, Father, Lord, strong in mind, body, and spirit. Father, ready to take on the challenge that you have set before us, giving us one more day, Father, to serve you and serve your people. Father, we thank you that as we go forth, Father, Lord, in this conference, Father, Lord, we just, we pray your anointing, Father, Lord, on every speaker. Father, on every attendee, Father, Lord. Father, we just thank you, Father, Lord, for your anointing going forth, Father. Lord. I thank you that as every speaker goes forth, Father, that they won't see them, Father, Lord, but they will see you in them. I thank you, Father, Lord, as we go forth, your Holy Spirit will have his way, Father, Lord, and share with us, share within our hearts, plant, rooted deep within our hearts, that which you would have us to take forth. Father, we just thank you as we go forth tonight, Father Lord, that your speakers will come forth with a rhema word, Father Lord, a word perfectly suited, perfectly fitted for this occasion. I thank you, Father Lord, that as your word goes forth, Father, it will not return to you void, Father, but we will do exactly as you have sent it forth to do. I thank you, Father Lord, for an awakening in this country. Father, I, I thank you, Lord, for a renewal within this country. Father, I just thank you, Father, Lord, for opening the eyes of your people. As we go forth, Father, Lord, from person to person, from door to door, from house to house, from election to election, from politician to politician, Father, we just thank you that your perfect will will go forth. We thank you, Father, for all that you will do, for the miracles, signs, and wonders that will go forth as a result of all that is said and all that is done here at this conference. We thank you, Father, for this evening. We thank you for this food that we are about to receive. We thank you, Father, that it will provide health to our bodies and joy to our taste buds. We just thank you, Father, for being you all by yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. All those in agreement said... Amen. Amen.
time to salute our flag. <clears throat> David, please stand. Ladies and gentlemen, this young man was a recipient of an Eagle Forum scholarship. I'd like to introduce David Crivy. Before we pledge allegiance to our beloved flag, I'd just like to recall briefly um, one of the only things that I remember from infantry combat school. One of my combat instructors, um, if, if you're at all familiar with the Marine Corps, you probably have heard of drill instructors and what legendary beasts they are. Well, a drill instructor takes young men who have just graduated high school and turns them into Marines. A combat instructor takes newly minted Marines and prepares them for war. This combat instructor was a former drill instructor. So imagine a drill instructor and a combat instructor as he observes a young Marine disrespecting the combat utilities that he's wearing. And I remember what he said to that Marine. Well, it was more of a scream. But he said, when you wear those utilities, or those camis, or whatever you want to call them, those, that camouflage uniform of the Marine Corps, you wear it like it's more perfectly made than our Armani tux, like it's more valuable than the most expensive garment you've ever worn, because that uniform is dyed with the blood of your brothers and sisters. And so as we pledge allegiance to this flag, let's just keep foremost in our minds the men and women of America who have not only pledged their allegiance to the flag, but also their lives, their sweat, and their blood. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs>